Hello everyone, welcome to the Wild West Garage. My name is Morgan. That's a 1950 Chevy cab. That's a brand new made in-house cab corner. And I'm gonna show you how I made that. Let's take a little closer look at this here. Um, you can see the extent of the rust quite, is quite apparent. Uh, what's nice about this though is this edge is preserved so I'll, I'll be able to make a template of that curve there. A um, little bit crumpled up back here, but that's not too bad. The dent there and the inner is a little, well it's, it's not, that's, that's part of the outer cab corner still there. So this lip here is solid, it's a little bashed up. It's only really rusty in the back here. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll get this kind of straightened out before I do anything. I see there's a brace, there's a brace, oh no, that's no, part of the inner. And there's, it's got this crappy undercoating all over everything. So uh, um, anyways, I'll uh, <clears throat> get this kind of all straightened out, clean it up, cut this off here, as high as I think I need to go. And then uh, actually I'll make the paper template first, and then I'll cut this off. And then uh, I'm gonna have to cut part of this out as well and rebuild this. So uh, anyways, let's get to work. Okay, so I've got this piece of, uh, it's just masking paper. And so I need to get it fit the truck. So right here, it's, it's reaching the edge of the, um, the lip. There's a bit of extra stuff here, so I'm gonna go in here and cut this off. A lot of extra on this side. Okay, so now you sort of see how I've already made a little pleat there. So basically this is the this is the size. I don't want to get too carried away here with these pleats because it's not really necessary for the uh, Cut the metal blank out, but see see how I'm gonna have to shrink that to make it turn. So this this is good enough now. I can use this as a uh, pattern for uh, for the blank. So I'll just take it over and cut out a piece of metal. So there's my blank, and I made it. <clears throat> I made it quite a bit longer. Well, not quite a bit longer. A little bit longer than uh, uh, the paper because the paper was a little short. So uh, and it's you know a, bit, a little bit more material down here too. So uh, <clears throat> I'd rather make it bigger than smaller because it's a lot easier to remove than to add. So, um, I know, yeah, uh, actually it looks, let's see, looks like it actually might be a bit short. So, it reaches there, wraps around to there, so that's good. So I'll, I'll uh, set the camera up here again and I'll start forming this up. So I already know that, um, you know, obviously I need to shape it in this direction, but 
I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to focus on this area here, getting this shrunk down. So this, this part up here isn't going to need any shrinking really. Um, it's just this part down here because it needs to curve in and to, and, to this, and to make this shape, I need to shrink this. So when I curve this over and start shrinking this, it will make this thing turn in this direction. So what I got to do here is uh, decide where I want to lay this thing out. So I'm going to start right here and then I'm just going to go in behind and draw a bit of a line here. So So everything below this line now needs to be shrunk. So this is just a hunk of uh, maple tree that I cut down on the property when I was uh, making way for my shop addition. So I'm going to turn this around so it's facing me. So I'm just going to start, I'm just going to go in here and this is kind of, not the first time for me, but the first time in a long time doing this. So uh, we'll see how it goes. There's a tuck. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these tucks with this mallet and then I'm going to flatten them up with a different tool. Not really working that great. I'm a little embarrassed. Just have to work a little harder, that's all. Make this happen. There we go, see that? So now, Gonna have to trap this. Different hammer. Get that on the handle. Oh, start to start to fold over.
mostly needs to be shrunk right here because by the time it gets to here this part is it's made the turn part of the trouble I'm having here is this is up too high you can't get it's going yeah I gotta, I gotta orientate this properly too There's a nice little tuck. That did a bunch of shrinking right there. So you don't want to have the this in line. It's got to be over here. Otherwise, it just it's just bending the whole piece, right? Sorry, I'm excluding you. I don't know if I'm actually going in deep enough here. So what I might have to do is um, stretch this area up here, I don't know. Just gonna open this up. See it starting to lay over. Yeah, the spider just came out of there. Was. You know, I like to trap this here. Here's Mr. Spider get squished. Right on the face, and then I like to. Keep going. Now it's starting to get some strength to it. This hammer isn't heavy enough. That's part of my problem. It's just too much. It's just too much work. This tuck formed on the other side.
headed in the right direction. So I'm not going to keep boring you with this. I'll work on it some more and see you in a bit. Thought I'd give this a go on the shrinker because the method I was using, I just can't get the tucks to come in far enough. So hopefully this is going to work. I'm just going to see because I got to shrink. I got to shrink everything from this red line down, like I was talking about before, and I just couldn't get those tucks to come in far enough. So. Uh, and then I've done a bunch of stretching here. If you stretch this here, that's going to turn in, right? So I don't want to stretch it too much. This is, I mean, there, this is 18 gauge, so I can get away with quite a bit, really. But uh, I don't want to stretch it much more than that. So that's, this is really starting to take shape now. Um, so that shrinker that I have isn't the best. Um, but what's nice about it, it, it can reach in quite a ways. It just doesn't have a lot of power. To, and especially like when, when this, when you do this much shrinking, the metal starts to get pretty thick. So what I was doing, I was just planishing this out every you know I don't know every time I did a pass on this and then I take the the flapper wheel and I was thinning out the metal just, just just going over it just removing these marks basically and so that thinned the metal out a little bit so that the shrinker could handle it so uh, let's throw this on the truck here That's really starting to fit now, and uh, it might end up being a little short there in a spot, but uh, that's okay. I can add a little piece there if I have to, but um, I think that looks pretty good overall, and uh, I'm going to have to stop now because we're going up for dinner, but... Um, Anyways, I think that's, you know, I was getting a little discouraged there at first. It's just perseverance. you got to look past the ugly stage and realize that you're going to get somewhere with this stuff. So the next day here, and uh, like I said, this is coming, coming along nicely. Um, I just did a little bit of planishing on it with just, just by hand. You can see it's pretty rough still. I'm gonna fire up my uh, my vintage planishing hammer and and work this over a little bit. But I just want to, you know, I do want to do a lot of lot of it by hand, just because some of you guys probably don't have a lot of tools. And so I just want to talk about <coughs> excuse me, 
some of the tools that I have on this bench here. So these are, some of you might recognize these, the excavator teeth. And so I worked at a, a company that had excavators. And uh, you know, these things wear out. And because I'm a metal shaper, scavenger kind of guy, always looking for shapes to help me do what I like to do. So these are, these are perfect for what I'm doing right now. So this, this one here, I've polished it up quite a bit. It needs a bit more work but it's, uh, it's working for what I'm doing today. So you can see there's, you know, there's, it's not a consistent shape. There's different areas of it that you can utilize to, for different shapes. And I've been, uh, just now I've been holding this piece on here like this. And uh, just to planish out this back face of the, of the piece. And that's, that's worked out quite well. And then uh, when I was working this area, I just uh, stood it up here on the corner. And then it's a little tighter radius that way. Then I can work, work this area here. And then for, uh, for this part down here, which is even tighter, I use this one. This isn't quite as worn out. And then I'll get, it, get it in there. Can you see that, that that nicely matches that radius right there? So, so just uh, basically free tools, uh, stuff that came out of a scrap bin. So if you know somebody that's in the excavating business, you can get some free worn out teeth. And this thing here, I haven't used it on this project yet, but it's, it's nice for a smaller stuff. This is a, I guess it's, it's a snubber. This came out of a rock breaker. So, uh, at the top of the breaker, like there's a housing that goes around the actual percussion uh, part of the, like the percussion unit of the, of the breaker. And this goes in the top and it points down. And I think there's a rubber thing that goes on here as well, but this, this kind of holds the percussion unit firmly inside the, uh, the uh, housing. And so, this was just a spare part that uh, was laying around that was from an old breaker that didn't, they didn't have anymore, so I, I snagged it. And then I took a chainsaw and hollowed this out a little bit. So it's nice for making smaller parts. And this is just a stump, like I said, from, from my property out of a, a maple tree. So I don't know if I should have done this here or not. It created some problems for me, so I'll probably make another one. And then, of course, my old anvil. Um, I think I traded that for something at work. They had it just in a shed. They weren't using it, so I ended up with that. So that's basically what I've been using for this. And then, of course, my, my, sh my shrinker out in the other shop and my planisher, planishing hammers out in the other shop. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some planishing on this right now. So fire up the air compressor and get this smoothed out a little nicer. This thing's loud, so be prepared. So after a little bit of work with the planishing hammer, let's smooth that out pretty nice. It's got a nice 
even kind of flow to it now. There's a bit of a bulge right there. Of course, I might be cutting a lot of this off. But anyways, it's, it's, it's starting to look like it could be a cab corner. I think that's the whole aim of this process. But uh, so, so one of the one of the issues I'm having right now is this. I don't know if you can maybe see it. Oh, well, maybe if I grab a straight edge, some sort, chunk of wood. Here, lots of chunks of wood in here. So the. I guess you want to call the apex of the corner here. It's hanging, it's hanging down too far. So I've got to, um, I've got to do some more shrinking in here, so that'll pull up and flatten out. So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more shrinking right in this area here, just to. Yeah, because it's really it's really bowing down here, all the way from here actually. But I think I can I can fix that part just by bending this here. But I'm definitely going to have to do a bunch more shrinking in that area. It's kind of nice I have the other side. It's not as badly rusted out as this side was. Just so I can look at it and compare. I think it's it's gonna it's gonna come it's gonna work. I mean, it might even no, it can't quite squeeze that enough to get it to to touch. Let's see see the gap. So I gotta I gotta close that gap up. You can just stick my finger in there. So it's got to come up about half an inch all along here. So we're getting close to fitting here. Show you how so it's pretty close there. It's close underneath here. I might end up having to add a little strip on here. I'm going to be. I think I'm going to come up short. But if you look up here, like if I hold my finger right there, so. Just even if I don't hold my finger there, if I hold it, I just hold it so it fits the best. You can see how it's touching right on the corner and it's not touching there and it's not touching over here. So what a see that see that line I drew, those lines I drew on that U-shaped line? So I've been stretching the material inside of that just on the anvil here using this, this hammer here, it's, you know, it's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. It's, it's pretty effective. So by stretching this, it'll, uh, it'll make that move out. And then the, these areas will get closer. So that's what I'm going to do here for a while. And I'll come back and show you how that worked out. So I spent more time on this than I think it should have taken, but I'm learning too. So one of the things that happened, and I'm not gonna try and correct it, was this whole blank, like where the, because I couldn't get in deep with the, the tucks, it ended up, there was more material on top here than underneath, so so I'm short here. So I am going to have to add a little piece in here. Uh, not so. I think I'm going to be okay there because that's going to move in at least that much when I trim it and you know get it fitted. So now I think I'm going to figure out how much of that original metal I can cut off or have to cut off. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to trim this because I'm just fighting a lot of this extra material now. And then I'm going to form this this uh, opening, this line here for the door opening. I'll tip that in. Probably just I'll just I'll just shrink this edge 
It'll tip in. And uh, then I think I'll have it pretty good. It seems to flow into the to the body fairly well. Um, I think if I cut some of this off here, it's going to be able to kind of move in more too, because this is kind of this is kind of rounded in. I've been trying to stretch this here, but like I said, I'm fighting all this extra material, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit, and it'll be a lot easier to work with. So another thing I've been doing here is uh, I've been spraying black paint on this and then holding the panel on there and just kind of wiggling it around a bit, rubbing it back and forth. And so I don't know if you can see right there, there's a spot where it's kind of hard to see because there's all these little, because actually I, I tried painting the inside of this first, thinking that the paint would rub off, but it didn't really work too good. So you can see that spot there in the middle of the screen. So that's uh, a spot that I need to work out a little bit. So um, that's what I've been doing. I've done that a few times and it's really helped me get the panel to fit on there. And yeah, so, so what I've been doing is where those paint transfer marks are, I've just been um, striking it in that area or just, you know, generally right in that area and just a little bit around it. And then um, just to stretch the metal out. And then I go, I go over to the planisher and planish it out smooth. You can see how nicely this fits now that I got it trimmed up. Sticking out a little bit there. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. It's not, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, sticking on a little bit right there. That's not going to be an issue. Fits perfectly here. So now I just got to form this edge and uh, form this little step here and extend it right here and she'll be golden. Beautiful. I just pressed this up tight against the the cab and I took this little screwdriver and I scribed along this edge here. So I think there's a pretty good mark in there now. And on the back here I got to put this little step here. So I just kind of I just kind of eyeballed it but I probably should I think that's probably square there. Yeah so here I just used a square this this line is 90 degrees to this line so I just marked where I want it with these little V marks so I didn't like the line I had scratched on there so I just went threw some paint on it and uh, rescribed it and then now I've got it marked out with this piece of tape and I'm going to trim this back so it's a consistent width from the tape. So to get things started on this bend, I'm just going to hammer and dolly. I think that's going to work. It's going to flatten this out, this curve. I don't know. I'll have to shrink it after. So I'm just holding this on the edge of the tape line. I tried to shrink it to get it started, but I'm having trouble with my shrinker, so. Crazy thing happened last night, about uh, 8.30, I was driving on, a, on the highway, two lanes in both directions, divided down the middle. And I saw a car up ahead. I couldn't tell if it was a car. I just saw 
some uh, amber lights flashing. So I thought it was somebody pulled over on the side. So I moved over into the left lane. And as I got closer, I realized it was a car going the wrong way down the highway. So I stayed in the left lane. And then actually, as the car approached me, they were right in the middle of the road. And they moved over as they went by me. And I watched in the rear view mirror, they went back into the left lane and there were other cars behind me. So I don't know what happened. I didn't hear anything in the news. My son was with me. He called 911, but that was pretty hopeless. Yeah, so anyways, nothing about an accident. So it's kind of crazy. Kind of, kind of makes you stop and think that your number could come up at any time. Could have been bad. Really bad. Worse than smashing into a 57 Chevy with a loaded car trailer. Yeah, that's kind of sucking. It's just too hard to hold on to. So I'm going to vice grip it. Start it with the vice grips. Just gradually work it along. See how it's flattening it out? Okay, now I can go with the dolly. Something to hook into there. I don't think that's 90 on the truck. Yeah, no, it's not. A little bit less than 90 degrees. So, turn this up here. And go back to the shrinker and see if I can get it to work. Yeah, I just want to grab, not all the way in, but almost all the way in. 
See if this will work. Oh yeah, it's starting to do something. Sort of worked for a second. Look in there. I think I kind of wore the thing out. I gotta do is make a template of that door opening so I can get this right. I need one of those profile gauges and you can see how much I gotta turn this. Most of the turning's gotta go on right there, so concentrate on that spot. This shrinker's kind of a piece of junk. I'm kind of sorry I bought it. I'm not sorry I bought a shrinker. I'm sorry I bought this one. I'm sure I can fix it though. Pretty good. It still needs more of the needs more of the bottom. Doesn't seem to want to bite there. Jaws keep popping right out of the bottom. It's not bad. <clears throat> There's no point in doing much more until I get a template. So I got a template made up here and did a little messing around with the bottom part here. It was a little bit too sharp, but it's, it's fitting pretty good now. So I'm just going to leave it at that until it comes time to fit it. I'm going to form the other, I'm going to bend this back now, Let's see how this goes here, it goes along, turns into the pillar and then got a little flange, we're going to form that. So I'm just getting going on this here, folding this back out. Want to start off with the vice grips just to get it going, and then I'll uh, I'm gonna I gotta stretch this a little bit so 
So I'll put it, I'll, I'll uh, hammer it over the edge of the anvil here. body hammer here. A little more civilized. carried away with this because it might uh, open up my bend here. It's pretty close. There's not a lot of strength in that, right? template which is right here it changed it a little bit I actually kind of tightened it up it's interesting that's okay off this corner here. Well, that fits really nice. Anyways, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna put this this step in it until I've got this all cleaned out. Cut this off until I start fitting this, and then I'll know exactly where that needs to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits here on this one. Uh, it's getting kind of long, but uh, this took quite a while. I would say I worked on this probably for six hours. So if you want to pay yourself 20 bucks an hour, make that. That's your problem. Anyways, it can be done. Can be bought too. Still have to extend that. It won't take long. I'll do that when it comes time to putting it all together. Okay. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I learned a few things along the way. I hope you learned something. I hope I, uh, you know, I hope I 
clearly explained how, how to do this. Maybe I left some stuff out. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, I'm going to make another one. So you'll have another chance and maybe we'll fill in the gaps. So, you know, the toughest part about making something like this is just getting past that ugly mangled hunk of sheet metal stage where you think that it's just not, not going to happen. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep working with it, working with it and, and slowly and it, it'll come. And if you, if you watch those high speed clips uh, <clears throat> where I was working the shrinker, you can really see how this, this bottom section really came in, in, into shape. It really started to, you know, gradually it just came into shape. So it's just, uh, it's a lot of work sometimes. My tummy muscles are sore from pulling down on that uh, lever on the shrinker. Uh, who needs a gym? Just do some metal shaping. So anyways, <clears throat> the next video is going to be uh, on uh, fitting this and get it, getting it welded in. And I'll have all these other parts made ahead of time. And I'll show you how that all goes together. and uh, I think it's really going to turn out nice. So. Uh, Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.